You can use a purchase agreement in Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012 for long-term commitments with the supplier. So for each time you buy products, you will use the agreement and the terms and the conditions on the agreement. You will have the ability to track to which extent the agreement has been fulfilled with regards to quantity or amount. Let's look at the scenario where Inge, the purchasing manager, has just negotiated a new agreement with a vendor to source satellite speaker model 01 for 10% of the normal purchase price. The agreement is only valid for the next six months or a net amount of maximum $5,000. Furthermore, under the same agreement, she commits to buy at least 2,000 pieces of car audio system model 2 over the next eight months for a unit price of $100. However, she's allowed to exceed the 2,000 pieces and continue to get the favorable price. Now Inga enters the purchase agreement in Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012. You can find the purchase agreements under Procurement Sourcing, Common, Purchase Orders, Purchase Agreements. From this list page, you can create a new purchase agreement. Enter the vendor account, Snow Protectors, and accept to transfer vendor default information, such as currency, language, delivery address, payment terms, etc. We choose a contact person for the agreement which will be transferred to the order when using the agreement. We also specify a vendor reference on the purchase agreement that can be If the invoice account on the purchase order is different from the vendor account, then we can insert an invoice account on the agreement that will be transferred to the purchase order when it uses the purchase agreement. There is a group of fields in the document field group that are used to describe general information for the agreement. This is purchase agreement ID, which is issued from a purchase agreement number series. The document title is a free text area where an informative title will help the person that create purchase orders to identify which agreements to use in the order creation process. We'll call this electronics. The preparer will automatically be filled with the name of the user that creates the agreement. If the agreement is documented outside Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012 and has a certain document number, then this number can be included as a free text in the external document reference. You need to select a purchase agreement classification. This could be general purposes. The classification can be used, for example, when searching agreements. It's a mandatory field. New agreements classification values can be added in a dedicated setup form. Once the agreement is saved with this field, it cannot be changed. The default commitment setting is used when creating commitment as lines on the agreement. We will get to that later in this session. We adjust the default validity period to an expiration date six months from the effective date. The effective date will default to today's date. This will be the validity period that is by default written on the commitments that will be created for the purchase agreement. The status is by default on hold. That implies that the agreement cannot be used on any purchase order. The status has to be effective before it can be used on a purchase order. The delivery address is the default delivery address for the vendor. If the delivery address on the purchase order should be different than the default, then we can change the address on the purchase agreement and that will be transferred to the purchase order when using the agreement. In the 
terms area, you can update the payment terms, charges group, delivery information, and administrative information. This information will be transferred to the purchase order when it's used on the purchase agreement. In our scenario, Inga has negotiated new payment terms so she can change the net 30 days to net 35 days when purchasing within the agreement. But then the payment has to be electronic. This will be transferred to the order as well. She has also agreed with the vendor that the mode of delivery should be UBS next day air. Yeah. Now the header of the purchase agreements is finalized and we need to add the commitments that Inca has negotiated. Go to the line sections of the purchase agreement. Expanding the purchase agreement header shows selected field from the header that is relevant for the creation of the commitments. We can create four different types of commitments on the purchase agreement. Product quantity commitment, product value commitment, product category value commitment, and value commitment. A product quantity commitment can be a promise to buy a quantity of 1,000 home theater over a specific time period for the unit price of, for example, $2,000. Or a product value commitment can be a promise to buy home theaters for the monetary amount of, let's say, $50,000 over a period of time, and in return get line discount on the unit price. A product Category value commitment can be a promise to buy products within purchase category for the monetary amount of $50,000 over a period of time, and in return get a line discount on the unit's price. Or finally, a value commitment can be a promise to buy for a monetary amount of $50,000 independently of what, and in return get a line discount. Well, Inga, she negotiated two types of agreement. One was for the product satellite speaker model 01 for a monetary amount of $5,000, and this is a product value commitment. And the other was for 2,000 pieces of car audio system model 2, and this is a product quantity commitment. Select the product value commitment as a default commitment and add a new line, a new commitment. We enter the product. The commitment is independent of configuration, size, and color, so we don't enter these, we leave these fields blank. The field quantity unit, so on, is blocked for this type of commitment. We enter the net amount for 5,000 US dollars and the discount percent to 10. The expiration date is defaulted from the header and that is the correct valid period for this commitment. However, we could change that date on the line and then have a, a different valid period for that commitment. We can enter more information about the commitment by expanding the line details fast tab. In order to use this commitment, then the requested delivery date on the purchase order line has to be within the effective date and the expiration date. The agreement with the vendor was that Inga could not buy more than of 5,000 US dollars for the favorable discount. So we set the max and false check mark. In some of the agreements that Inca negotiates, there's a limit on the amount for the purchase order line using the agreement. Inca can enforce a warning on the purchase order by entering minimum release amount and maximum release amount. So if the net amount on the purchase order lines falls under or exceeds the limit, then a warning is generated. The price and discount tab contains the 10% we entered. 
In some cases, Inga needs to make sure that all the purchasers that use the agreement is using the same discount as stated on the commitment. So the person editing the purchase order should not be allowed to modify the price discount information on the purchase order line in a way so it deviates from what is stated on the commitment. In case they do so, the purchase order line will not be registered as fulfilling the commitment. To enforce such a policy, Inca would have to set the checkmark price and discount is fixed. On the fulfillment tab, there is an overview of how much has been purchased for the commitment. Now we have not used the agreement yet, so the remaining is the full amount of $5,000. Once we create a purchase order that uses the agreement and add a line on the purchase order according to the commitment, then that will be registered as released. When the goods are physically received, then the amount is vis visible as received and not as released. And finally, when the amount is invoiced, then it will be visible as invoiced. The full committed amount is visible in the amount field. The contents of the project tab are enabled when the agreement is defined for a specific project. The project ID, category and activity number will be defaulted to the purchase order line. Now Inge needs to enter the other commitment she made with the vendor. She has to buy 2,000 pieces of car audio system model 2 over the next eight months for a unit price of 100 US dollars. However, she's allowed to exceed the two 2,000 pieces and continue to get the favorable price. The default commitment is changed to product quantity commitment. So this determines the type of line that is created. Add a new line. I'll add the product. We do not enter anything for configuration, size, and color inside warehouse, as this is not a criteria on the purchase order line in order to use the terms of the commitment on the order line. The quantity field is now open for editing, as this is relevant for a product quantity commitment. We enter a quantity of 2,000, and the unit stays as each, defaulted from the product. The purchase has to be in the same unit. The unit price is set to 100. According to the agreement with the vendor. The net amount is automatically calculated to the net amount based on quantity and price information on the commitment. The expiration date is defaulting from the header expiration date, but in this case it's wrong as Inga negotiated a valid period of eight months. We adjust the expiration date so it covers eight months. So now all the information is filled in on the agreement and we can freeze the current version of the agreement and select by selecting the confirmation button on the action pane and we select that the agreement is set to effective after this process. So then it will be ready to use. This ends the video of how to create, update and follow up on a purchase agreement. I recommend that you see the video of how to use a sales agreement in the sales order process.